Hello, welcome back to Engineering Improvisation. Now it's finally time to go ahead and replace this burned out fan speed switch. Stick around and let's get her done. <laughs> Okay, now first things first is how do you know this switch is bad? So, when if your fan isn't running, of course down in here, uh, fan isn't running or not running right or something's weird, obviously there's a lot of links to this chain. Is it actually the switch that's going bad? That's something you're going to have to determine on your car. Now if you've you see my other videos or, or if not I do have a video where I keep pointing over here because that's where the, the fan motor is I have replaced the fan motor so if you want to see a video on that check my list and it's down there I don't have that many videos it shouldn't take very long to find so in mind how do I know that it's a switch well I showed it in another video but I'll go ahead and do it again here thankfully for me this was really easy to figure out so got a mission on Fishing on. Now I replaced the motor so it's nice and quiet. It's probably gonna be hard to hear. You might be able to hear it spinning up and then nothing. But if I push on the switch on the side, you can hear it kicking on that relay and the fan comes off. So that made it really obvious, as you can tell, since I had to push the switch over, is the content contacts of the switch that were just completely burned out. So, got to dig into that dash and replace that switch. It's really not that bad. It's like a lot of jobs, similar to when I did the motor. It can be kind of tedious, it can be maybe a little frustrating, but it's really straightforward once you get down to it. So let's get started. Okay, first things first, getting better access. I just slid my seat all the way back. This car does have tilt steering wheel. I'll go ahead and tilt that down, give me a little more, I mean, not that far, to get in a good position so I have better access. You will need to be sure to remove your A-pillar trim. Um, mine, if you've seen some other videos, you know this car's a work in progress. Those trim panels haven't been on in a long time. You know, I've done some insulation to the roof for doing my headliner. Not looking forward to that, but I'll get to that in due time. So, easy enough though. Two screws, each side, e pillar trim comes off. Then you gotta take the dash pad off, which really isn't that hard either. All my screws are already out because the screws haven't been in this dash pad in I don't know how long, if you know the backstory of this car, you know, with my late brother's car. And the screws were already out <laughs> when I received the car because he was in the middle of working on it himself. And I don't even know where they are. I'm going to have to try to figure that out later. But it's not hard. Just kind of feel around in the middle of the cluster. There's a screw there. It's going to come down. There's one right here above where it's normally either a blank or a clock. Here, I have a boost gauge. And then there's one more right here close to the corner next to the fence. Get those three out. Easily accessible. The other two, the glove box, right underneath this lip. One on either end, one over here, one over here. So get those five screws out, and the dash pad just lift straight up. Now I'm not gonna, I'm holding the camera, so I'm not gonna try and take this out with one hand. I don't wanna damage this pad. Believe it or not, this is the original dash pad for this car, 51 years old. There is not a crack or scratch in it. Yeah, believe it or not, yeah, that's absolutely true. So I'm gonna be pretty careful with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down, two hands, get this out of the car. Be right back. Okay. Now the dash pad is off. Remember, it's just gentle, and it'll come right out. You're, if yours has been on there forever, is this is actually mine's actually been off and on a bit, doing some repair work. Uh, but if yours has been on for who knows, who God knows how many years, it may be stuck just gentle work back and forth back and forth and you can get it up once you get it up it just lifts and slides straight towards you because you have these metal tabs that clip in to uh, if, it'll, if i can get the yeah, it's really tight quarters when the windshield is in place uh, you almost can't see okay hard to see i already get my 
hand in there. There. So there's these all across the dash, kind of by the VIM tag in here. So anyway, it goes along the dash and it clips in. Clips in like that. So when you put them back in, you just gotta kind of position it, line it up, and then slide it in and then back down. Now when you have it out, very possible one or more of these clips will fall out because after you know, so many years, vibration and stuff, they can kind of work themselves loose. So uh, if they do, don't worry about it, fish them out. Hopefully they don't drop down a dash too bad. Um, even if they don't, check them. Um, I've done that with this one and you know, kind of tighten them up if you can. Otherwise put a little black RTB or some other, uh, some kind of adhesive. You don't necessarily have to do like hard strength epoxy or anything like that because they don't really see any load. You just want to make sure they stay in place. All right. So you know, make sure they're all nice and firm. And I mean, you'd say this one wiggles, but you can see it's held in there pretty good. And, and so on for back, further back. I happen to know all these are actually holding on pretty well, so I'm not too worried about them. But yeah, if yours feel like they're going to fall out after wiggling on them a bit, be sure you RTV them back in because then it could be a real pain. It's actually happened to me before you were to put a dash pad back in the car and they fall out. So, yeah, you don't want to have to let them fall out. Now, you know, again, you're gonna have to bear with me on some of the views in here because it's it's just tight quarters. And obviously, this is gonna be a car with air conditioning. So, if yours doesn't have AC, um, you're still gonna have these vents. Uh, your controls will be slightly different. You'll still have a switch, obviously, but the switch itself is slightly different. Um, I believe there are fewer pinouts on the switch if you don't have AC. I'm not entirely sure, but I mean, I have an AC car, so I'm doing it work, obviously, with an AC car. So um, take this with a bit of a grain of salt if you don't have, have AC. Or if you're a different year. This is 70, so this should be the same 70 to 72, but this overall... The layout slightly different, but the overall design is the same uh, starting in 68, I believe. Again, the switch is slightly different, but the orientation and everything and the location of the dash is the same. In fact, uh, I can show you that because I happen to have a set of uh, uh, AC controls for a 69. Eh, don't ask, long story. Um, but I can show that as a reference because I'll be able to film that. I'm not probably not going to be able to get the camera in here to film. So all that said, here's the, the box for the vents, these upper vents above the control panel. And you probably heard me use this phrase before, but you're going to have to do some of this work by braille. And it's really not bad. This, uh, I'm going to have to get my head in here again, as I've had these off before. I believe it's, it's either two or three. Oh, yeah, right. So this screw up here in the front needs to come out because there's a tab in the back. I'm just not going to be able to get the camera on that. And then I believe there's one on either side to get this box up. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward once you get in there and look at it. So, again, I'm going to need two hands. I'll get, I'll get, I'll, I'll come back when I get that out. All right. Catch back up with you in a minute. Okay, got the, got the three screws out. And, I mean, it, it might actually be different from car to car. It all depends on assembly line and how it was done and then and or if your cars have been gotten into before but uh, for me this screw was a 5 16 quarter here and came in there front up there okay and a quarter down there once you do that pretty straightforward vents just kind of go straight back kind of tilt back maybe hard to see but it is a foam Right in front of foam seal. It's been redone before. And now, slowly, again, trying to do this with one hand, slowly, just take your time, nobody in a rush, and work it out. See, that's it. So, obviously, this has been gone in before. And, um, yeah, just your regular self adhesive foam tape around there to replace the seal that i'm sure was completely degraded at one point so obviously that's butyl so that'll just not last forever okay set that down and obviously there's yeah these magnetic tool holders definitely now again trying to get the 
camera down in here and all this mess. Okay, so there's there's the back of the switch. Again, I want to do this without taking the entire control panel out. I mean, I'm sure people will say, yeah, you got to take the whole panel out and then you can get to the switch. Yeah, maybe that's a lot. I can, I can really get hairy because you have all these vacuum lines and everything works. I don't want to run the risk of breaking any of that. So I'm going to try and do this just from back here. Next on this one, these little plastic, and these, this, these are this plastic part for the wires. This one's pretty crumbled, uh, but it's just a holder. Uh, so the wire connections are already, are still in there. So this plastic holder, I mean, it helps for assembly line, but it's not really that necessary to have it. I mean, the wires can just be plugged in individually into the switch. Actually, now would be a good time to kind of give an idea of what's going on with the switch. Because, you know, again, I can sort of see what's going on, but I, I can't get the camera in there. This would be a good time to go see that other other uh, panel I have. So, switching gears for another second. Okay, here and among all my parts, here's that for control panel for... I believe, obviously it's for an AC car, it says AC, because we have a separate lever for it. Now, obviously this has three levers, whereas the one in the car, the 70, has two. So I'm, and the, the bezel is slightly different. I believe this is for a 69, a 68, 69. But obviously it's, a, the switch is about frozen. So anybody asked me, hey, why don't you just put that switch in a, No, this is another 50 plus year old switch. No, if I'm going to go through this trouble, I'm going to put in a new switch. So, yeah, the controls are slightly different, but the layout is the same. That's what's important here. So here's the switch. Okay. And <clears throat> one thing to note is... <coughs> excuse me. Okay, get this out of the light. Okay, you can see where the two screws are. Okay. Um, so you, that's what you're reaching for. Try and break those loose, and you should be able to get your fingers. Yeah. Unless you have some really fat sausage fingers. Mine, mine are decent. I might be able to get in there. But we'll, we'll figure it out across our road when we get to it. One thing to notice though, this switch is all the way up. And you can see the heads of those screws. So if I so if I move that switch down, you see what happens. Okay, that kind of trim part of the switch blocks that bottom screw. So if you're gonna try and take that out with a switch down. It's not happening. In the middle position, maybe you're going to be better off going all the way up. Okay, keep that in mind. If that switch isn't all the way up, you're probably not going to get it out. Right. Okay. Also, I believe it's going to be the same size screw. <laughs> that may even help me if I end up dropping one of the screws down on the dash, can't find it. I'll just rob one of these. Um, but one thing I've noticed so far is whenever you're inside the dash, pretty much every screw is either a 5 16 or a 1 quarter. So these are probably going to be 5 16 so that'd probably help. At least be able to stab something in there without having to go back and forth to the toolbox. All right. So now it's going to try and get that switch out. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film, so it's probably you'll probably see me again when the old switch is out of the car. All right. We'll figure that out as we go. Right. Catch you in a minute. Okay, you have to. I have to correct myself here a bit. It is one of the ways GM can get kind of sneaky on you. Um, they change things from year to year. So again, you're you're just not going to be able to see it. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll see if I can see it through the windshield and do a quick quick video. But the screws are not this way; they're that way. So actually, it might make it a little easier to get to. So yeah, let's make that correction. So obviously change, change. Yeah, if I can get the camera angle through. So if I can get the. So that there was obviously a difference there between the prior years and you know, 70, 70 to seventy two. So uh, yeah, back to trying to get this switch out. Okay, yeah, here just real quick, you might be able to see, kind of see the back of the switch and see those two screws just kind of pointing straight back. I just wanted to point that out. You can sort of see that top screw is covering the bottom screws. Can't really see that one. So, yeah, live and learn.
move on. All right, see you when I get the switch out. All right, got the switch out. Really wasn't uh, too terribly difficult. Um, again, just by Braille, be patient, take your time, end up just, uh, I'm gonna grab it. Uh, those two screws end up being for me a quarter inch. I just use a short extension. I was able to crack it loose with the ratchet and then just, I was able to, this, turning this is a lot easier doing trying to get my fingers on it until I could get my fingers on it enough to turn it out the rest of the way. And then, yeah, of course the screws being on the side, you know, you know, makes it a little bit. I could have just looked at the new switch and I could have figured that out. But you know what? All is not lost. If you have a 68 or 69, now you know what the back side of your panel looks like too. So there you go. So again, here's a new switch. And uh, I've already compared the pins and everything to the old switch. Again, it's going to be hard to get back here. But it is the same. It's identical. So this particular switch I happen to buy through um, Ausley's Chevelle. And they had the best. Oh, I dropped it on the floor. There's a number. Um, so that's what you're looking for, or that's what you need. That's what this is what you're looking for. As far as who having the best price, um, price plus shipping, um, Ausley's was definitely the the winner for me. And I know buying only one part like this is the worst way to do it. I end up because the part was thirty bucks, which is way better than some of the other sites. Shipping was about 15, fortunately. That was not quite as good as some of the other sites, but total price, it was still way less. As I know, it's so much better. You save a lot on shipping if you buy multiple parts at the same time. Sometimes you can save on that a bit. But yeah, when you get into this stage of a project, I don't need a lot of parts. I need onesies, twosies, and I need them months and months apart so as I figure out what I need to replace. So it is what it is. That's okay. So, I actually had, and I'm trying to fix some of this, you may have, well, you probably won't be able to tell. Yeah, you see, I'm really big about making sure you put dielectric grease on your connections. Um, all your wiring connections, no matter where they are, uh, it's just cheap insurance. Since you're going to put things back together, you'll make sure you get real good contacts. Whatever, you, whatever work you do, you really don't want to do it again. So I have done that at one point because I was because uh, I've been in here to see if maybe that was part of the problem with the switch before I discovered that pushing it to the side to uh, turn the motor back on. I thought it was just something either in those last two uh, switch positions in the circuit and the switch. So I thought maybe it was something with the wiring, tracing all that down, so on and so on, and it was all good. So that's when I figured out I finally stumbled across pushing on the switch and it came off. So. Now I just got to transfer all those wires from the old switch to the new switch. So again, the next time you see this, the new switch will be on these wires. Okay, and I, I kind of figured this would happen, so I'll go ahead and grab it on film. So I want to pull the plastic connector off. Yeah, I've got to slip back on a little bit. And you see what happened. One of the terminals came out with a plastic, and the plastic broke on the other two. Okay. Not a problem. You see the terminal connectors are still there, okay? So it just means that instead of uh, swapping it all out, a plug at a time, I'll do it. Some are in the plug, some are gonna be individual, but it's that those kind of things are very likely on these old cars for that to happen. Plastic, plastic skip brittle over all the years and heat cycles. So not entirely un, unexpected. So yeah, just, just, there's no reason, there's really no reason to try and replace that plastic part. Even if you're trying to go for Concord points, are they really going to take your dash apart? <laughs> of course not. So, of course, you know, I'm joking. So, uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and swap all that across. All right. So, back to swapping the switch. Okay, here we go. The uh, new switch. Now has all the connectors on. The black connector came off in one piece just fine. It was stuck on there pretty good, but I just got a uh, small flathead screwdriver in there. So, they worked it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it popped off. Okay, no need to force anything particularly hard on it. Now, of course, thought it occurred to check check the fan to see if it works while, you know, before I put the screws in to, to button it down. However, that's one thing that you notice a lot when you're working on the wiring on these A-bodies is a lot of switches and stuff 
like to ground through their mounting screws, or at least provide a supplemental ground through their mounting screws. So, um, yeah, I'm not going it, to, it's, <laughs> you need some tracing back on the wiring trying to figure that out. Um, I'm looking at the color coding of the wires. I don't remember offhand which one, if the one of those is a dedicated ground. So I'm just going to go ahead and install the switch before I test it. I will test it though, and, we'll, and I'll, I'll bring you back for that, but I will test before putting all the rest of this back together. All right. So catch back up to you in a second. Okay, so here we are, our switch this is back, back on the dash, firmly mounted. Now remember too, when tightening these screws down, these screws are nothing more than self tappers. So don't, don't put any ugga-duggas on them. They do not need to be tight. Just snug. So now, moment of truth. And do I have all my fan speeds? Okay. Again, again, I don't know if the microphone's gonna pick, pick up the fan noise. I definitely have. Oh, medium one, medium two. These last two are the ones that were burned out in the other switch. Yes. And hi. Yay! Awesome. Everything works. I have all my fan speeds back. So there we go. That's all done. So, I mean, obviously, installation is a reverse of disassembly. So there's some extra, some extra wires in here for the MSD. So yeah, tuck that into the ducting. And carefully work the vent back into place, dash pad back on, your screws back in, your paper pillar trim, and you're done. That's it. Now, admittedly, getting these screws back in in here was a little little finicky because again, it's by braille. You can't see anything that you're doing. You don't have a lot of access. Just take your time, be patient, and be careful. And you got it. It only took me five or six minutes total messing around with the, but you're messing around with two screws for five or six minutes and you're fumbling with them it can get frustrating i totally get it but just be just be patient relax breathe you've got this all right and yeah if you've gotten this far you know how to put it all back together so anyway i hope this video helped out and uh, if, if you can go give me a sub a like or whatever that really help and i look forward to seeing you in the next one peace out